this coral castle. TV. Welcome back to the channel, Coral Castle TV. And as always, I'm your host, R.L. Poole, author of the number one bestseller in the physics of gravity on Amazon, The Lead Scalding Codex, Breakthroughs in Understanding the Coral Castle. Today we'll be talking about something that is very near and dear to me, the fact that physics and celestial mechanics are actually connected. And I can prove this by what I observed from a single symbol left by Edward Leedskullen, the one you see on the screen now. Ed left us his geographical position as well as his celestial position encoded into this symbol. And I'm going to show you how and even more importantly, why. First, we must be familiar with the term diurnal motion. Each day, the Earth rotates once counterclockwise on its axis. As a result, objects in space appear to move across the sky over the course of the day. And this daily motion of the sun, moon, stars, and planets to our viewpoint is called diurnal motion. And what is also true is that the Earth spins counterclockwise. However, if you are looking from the South Pole to the North, the Earth's motion actually appears clockwise. And that is exactly what we see in this symbol, we have a yin-yang symbol which appears to denote clockwise motion, which is exactly what you would expect if you were looking up from the Earth to the North Pole, starting from the South. One of the things I look for with symbols, pictures, things like that is additional context. And With Ed, we have it. He says, the Earth itself is a great big magnet. And it is. We have a North and South Pole. We have a magnetosphere. We generate electricity from a spin. We are a magnet. And it is at this point where I began to understand, in context with other concepts, exactly what he was showing. And that this will take the frown of physics and hopefully turn it upside down. In this case, what he appears to be showing us is that all celestial objects are magnets to one degree or another. If we agree that the Earth itself is a great big magnet and that it has a north and south pole, then we must concede uh, that other celestial objects do as well and then extrapolate that information to apply to other celestial objects and other celestial alignments. Ed didn't see celestial alignments like this. He saw them like this. What you're seeing now is uh, the trigger mechanism for a Gauss rifle. What I postulate is that Ed, like the ancients before him, used these celestial alignments as a magnetic device. And he is using these alignments of these magnetic celestial bodies in certain orders and certain fashions in order to capitalize on something which I have termed the celestial Gauss effect. He is showing us that when these magnetic objects come into a certain alignment and that you are in the correct place at the correct time when that happens, then you can benefit from this celestial Gauss effect using some sort of amplification system that he had at the castle. I also took the time to look up the eclipse of September 10th, 1923 and saw Ed's geographical positioning in relation to the beginning of the eclipse and what he shows in the symbol is accurate. When the eclipse starts, it starts right around Japan and Ed is on exactly the opposite side of the planet. This symbol is geospatial in origin because it shows the eclipse. It shows looking up from the South Pole to the North on the Earth. He shows you the direction of the eclipse and he shows you his exact position on the Earth when it happens. This is all very important information and he included it in one single very cleverly designed symbol. So on the wall, of the coral castle, he shows us the eclipse. Then in this symbol, he shows us diurnal motion. And he shows us his 
geocelestial positioning. And I believe the reason for this is because he wants us to see where to be when this celestial gaussing effect happens, that when you are in the right place at the right time, you can get a great deal of help. The evidence indicates that the celestial gauss effect is a real phenomenon and one that has been completely overlooked by mainstream astronomy, physics, and astrophysics, and that this was the secret of the ancients and that they had used this to build enormous megalithic structures uh, in a way that would otherwise not normally be possible. It also goes a long way toward explaining why the ancients would be so obsessed with uh, celestial mechanics and mathematics and why it was so important for them to have this so accurately when in any other way it does not seem to help their culture or their people. I believe this also creates a very credible argument for explaining the phenomenon that happens at places like the Bermuda Triangle or why there have been ley lines recorded over time as these celestial alignments would affect a certain area for a certain time in a straight line and then disappear. The magnetic effects of celestial alignments must be studied further in order to fully understand their effect on our world, but first they must be recognized and that is what this work is about. My name is R.L. Poole, and I'm a life member of American Mensa, best-selling author in the physics of gravity on Amazon, and host of Coral Castle TV. Keep watching. This is Coral Castle TV.